Okay, uh, so next, let's talk about group. Uh, so group is a way that we can create a new field that by combining different members together. Um, so we can create a group by sele selecting those markers or by group by the fields. Or we can create a group by using calculation, where if when we are using calculations, we can use a parameter to control the calculation. OK, and also we can also create groups with beans. So that is very, very handy. Uh, so this is one example that um, I think we did that in one of our previous lab that so we want to show the, uh, the diamond that are big or small. So we can use uh, group them into different category uh, and also and I show the different colors. And here we create a parameter so that user can control the parameter so that the the colors will be different. Or we can create beans so that we can group by beans. So here you can see where you for different weight, okay, range, um, and what is average price. Okay, so that is a group. Okay, uh, so let's uh, look at an example that in our diamond data. So here first, let's bring um, price and also weight, okay, into this. Um, uh, scatter plot and also let's bring ID into the details. Okay, uh, so to create groups, you can just select those markers and you can see here we can manually create a group. Okay, so that you can give the name, for example, uh, big di uh, diamond or expensive diamond. Okay, and if you choose that one to show the colors, and you can see uh, we have those groups and also we have the other. Uh, that outside of those groups. Okay, uh, so let's so let is create uh, from the um, view. Uh, we can also create from the uh, field. For example, here uh, we can also create a group. Okay, uh, you can see if you want group based on different categories, so you can group those stuff. Okay, so as long as that makes sense uh, to your analysis. Uh, so probably, for example, if you want to group the colors, you can group those two colors like as good color, and the others see as bad color. Okay, and you can drag the group to the colors. Okay, and you can see good color or the bad color. Okay, so that is also create groups, uh, creating groups um, by the field. And probably the most common way is that um, is that we can create a group um, based on a calculation. So, for example, let's say we create a new calculated field. Okay. So I create a calculated field. Okay. Um, let's say uh, here. Let's see here, I create a uh, size. So I say if the weight is greater than 0.5, then I will say that is a big diamond. Else, I will say that is a small diamond. And, okay, so that is a very simple if else uh, statement. So now I have the size. So now if I put size into colors, okay, and we can see they are all small. So I think I might meet some mistake in the, oh, okay, so 0.5. Okay, so now you can see those are big diamond and also those are small diamond. So that is create a group by using calculation. And we can also use a parameter to control the calculation. So for example, now let's create a new parameter. Uh, let's call it size. Okay. And let's say a current value 0.5. So this can be any value. Okay. And let's give it a range. Let's say minimal is zero and the maximal is two uh, with a step of 0.1. Okay, so now we have a size parameter and also we have the size uh, field calculation. So now let's bring 
the parameter into the calculation so that we can uh, connect the parameter with calculation together. OK, so now you can see the default value is point uh, is one. So that's why the one um, is uh, uh, the division that decides big or small diamond. And now if we show um, parameter, OK, and we can control the size. OK. So that by doing that, we can control um, how do we want to classify the diamond, so bigger or small. OK, so that's very nice. Uh, another way to create a group is that we can also create beans. So for example, here we right click the wheat. Let's say we create beans. And you can see the recommended beans is 0 0.06. Let's say we just want point one as the size of the beans. OK, so now we have the weight of the bean as a group. And we select price and we create uh, this uh, bar chart. And let's see the average price for the weight. And we can see that now we have a very clear distribution of the how the price increase with weight. So on average, that if the uh, diamond is bigger, so the average price will also be bigger. However, that is interesting here. Uh, so for this range, if the price is greater than 1.1, so the average price actually dropped. OK. And if you remember that from our previous labs, so that is because those big diamonds have lower clarity or have uh, have bad colors. OK, so that's the reason that why it dropped. OK, so that's enough for the group. Now let's talk about set. OK, so it is our first time to see set. So set is a, a combination of data. OK, so it may sound like group. However, it doesn't is does not look like group. So it's more look like filters. OK, so it it like that you you cap the result of the filters. So that is set. OK, so set can be created from the markers. So those are called consistent set so that once you create it, you cannot you can no longer change the sets. You can also create it via dynamic, so that is created from the calculations. And uh, you can combine multiple sets together. So if the sets are created from the same dimensions, and those can be combined together. OK, uh, sets can also be created as filters and can also be used as filters. OK, so can be created from filters and also used as filters. And a set can also be used in hierarchy and also calculations. OK, uh, so this is one example of using set. OK, so uh, let's see example in our uh, lab one data. OK, uh, so let's say we uh, still use a scat plot. OK, um, put ID into the details. Uh, so if we want just select, oops, um, title back here okay and put ID into the details so if we select those markers and you can see instead of create a group and we can create a set okay so for some of those you can call it big diamond okay and once you have the set and you can bring that one into colors you can see whether or not they are in the set or outside set. OK, so this may sound, look like um, uh, it's very similar to group, but it is not. OK, uh, let's say we also can create a um, set based on the field. So for example, here we click the IDs. Let's say we create the first set. And let's see, we, here we can use conditions. We see that clarity. OK. Is uh, not not clarity. Let's say the uh, the price. Sum of price is great than let's say. Um, 10,000 and uh, let's call it. Expensive set. 
OK, so now if you put that one into colors, you can see within that uh, set, those are more expensive diamonds. Outside of the set, those are uh, cheaper diamonds. OK, and we can also use set as a filter. So for example, if I do not use that as colors, so if I put that one into filters, so now you can see those sets are now used as filters. So we just filled out those cheaper diamonds. So here, let's see how we can create a set from the filter. So let's bring ID into the filter. And let's say we want top 10 um, based on the weight. OK, based on the weight. So now we have top 10. So now if we right click this one, so you can see we can create a set based on the current filter. And now let's say this is um, big diamond, OK? So now let's drag that one out. So now you can see we have this, uh, all, all the points. And if we back, drag that one back to our colors, we can see we have the big diamond, OK? Um, so that is creating set from the, um, the filter. And of course, we have to show members so that we are using the set as uh, a filter. Uh, OK, so one thing that is really different from group is that so if those two sets are created based on the same dimensions, in this case, we all create a set based on IDs. And we can actually combine those two sets. OK, um, um, so it looks like those two sets cannot be combined. I guess that is because this set is created from the filter. So let's create a new set. OK. And here, let's say we want top 10. This one, let's say top 10 clarity. Or not clarity. Uh, let's see, weight. OK, so we call it big set. OK. OK, so now you can see those two sets can be uh, combined. Remember that this set we use a uh, condition that based on the price, but still from the ID. And this one, uh, we are using the top 10 weight still from the ID. Now if you select both, and we can create a combined set. So here you can choose uh, the relationship. So you can use shared, so that is the inner drawing, left drawing, right drawing, etc. So let's choose inner drawing. So let's call it big and expensive. Okay, so now we have this big and expensive. So if we put that one into color, okay, so we can see we have two records that are big and also expensive. So that belongs to both sets. OK, mm, so looks like this one created from filter cannot be combined with other sets. OK, mm, let's talk also talk about filters. Uh, so we have already been using filter through this entire semester. But just keep in mind that if you are using a lot of filters, you will slow down the performance of the dashboard or the workbook. OK, so uh, with cultures that when we are using filters. So do not use a lot of filters because that will make the query a um, little bit complicated. And also remember that by using different filters, the order of the filter will also make you different results. So you have to really have a good understanding of your filters. So for example, the record level filtering may have very different result than the summary filtering. And also, there are different levels of the filters. So data source filters apply to all sheets using a data con uh, connection. So that um, work first before you apply the other type of filters. So this is an example. So here you can see we are using the same records, OK? Same peels. However, by using different filters, you can see the results are different. So here I'm using the summary filtering. And here I'm using the record level filtering. And the results are different. OK, so let's say an example in our uh, 
lab. So let's say uh, we bring the clarity into the rows. OK, and let's see here. And also we bring the average price. OK, that's the average price. So here let's use uh, discrete so we won't see the numbers. OK, now we can see that uh, for all the average price for each clarity, the average price all are all above uh, 2,500. OK, so now if we create a filter based on the average price. OK, uh, let's say that the average price is great less than. OK, two two 2,500. And then we can see we have all the records. OK, we still have all the records. Um, that is because on average, each category of the clarity, the average price is above that uh, filter. But now if we drag the colors, OK, and now you can see that now this filter can apply to the combination of the clarity and also colors. So now you can see all within each subcategory, so the colors for the average price, they also need to be above 2,500. OK, above 2,500. So if I drag out this filter, we can see that we do have the some category like this one, the G color in IF clarity, the average price is below 2,500. OK, so that is the summary filtering. So let's try another filtering. So let's say we bring clarity into the filters. And the condition is that uh, the average price is greater than uh, 2,500. OK, so here we can see still we have all the clarities. But now if we bring the color, we can see we still have those filters. We, we have still have some records that although that is below 2,500, they still belong to this table, the result. So that is because this is the row record level filtering. So that the field, the only field out of clarity that does not meet the average price. However, since all the clarities that meet that filterings, so now if even you drag that one, drag colors into the current view, they will still meet the standard that the for the clarities, the average price is still above 200, 2,500. OK, so that's the difference between rector level and also some uh, summary level. And now if we go to the data source and we can also add filter here. So this filter will apply to all the data. OK, so for example, if I add a filter where uh, let's say color. OK, let's say we want to exclude the color D. OK, so this filter is called data sort filter. And now you can see even we don't have filter here, the color D is no longer in our view. And also it's no longer in any of those views. OK, so that's your data source filter. So that applies to all the sheets using that data connection. OK, uh, so let's remove this one. OK, and now you can see color D is not back. 